counting double digit thousands. <laughs> Hey guys, we are back again with another video, and in this video I'm going to show you how to make these amazing speakers. These are carbon fiber speakers with blue LED edge lit, and they not only look awesome, but sound absolutely amazing. Let me tell you what the reason for building these. I decided that I was going to build a racing simulator in my house, and I thought that I would want some speakers that will match the awesomeness of the racing arcade. And so this is what I came up with. I took a Paul Carmody design, which was designed for a uh, boombox, and designed them into two computer speakers that will be a left and right speakers. And I'm going to go ahead and make two more because I'm going to do a full 5.1 surround sound in this racing arcade. But enough of what I'm going to do with them. Why don't I show you how easy it is to make these really cool speakers. You are going to need a few pieces of material to start off with. You're going to need some half inch MDF and some one quarter inch piece of plexiglass. Now we're going to go ahead and cut these speakers out. These speakers should have a total length of six inches and a total width of six inches and they should be 11 and a half inches tall when you're done. So get your carbide hole cutter out, put it on your drill and cut it. Now when you cut this I clamp the plexiglass directly to it so that the hole is perfectly centered every time you cut it and cut both front baffles. You're also going to need a hole in the rear baffle. So on the rear baffle you're going to want to turn it around and you're going to want to measure down four and three quarters down and three inches over that will be your center point and you're going to want to take a one and a half inch hole cutter and cut that. And that's because later we're going to use some one and a half inch PVC pipe to make a port for this. Now, I went ahead and rounded over both the front and rear baffle. I will say that that does make it harder to vinyl wrap, but it does make it look a lot nicer in the end. So I'm a fan of just going ahead and doing the round over. That is a 5 inch, 5 8 inch round over. Now after you're done with this, it's very simple. You just want to go ahead and vinyl wrap the front. One thing I did learn on this vinyl wrap, this was my first time actually using it. First of all, it's pretty easy to use. It is not simple though, and so take your time and uh, really make sure that you are going over this uh, fairly well. I first started with a blow dryer thinking that a blow dryer would be enough, and I must say I really need a heat gun, especially around the round over. Now the rest of it I could have done with, a, with just a blow dryer, but really you need a heat gun to get it really hot to do that round over properly. So keep that in mind if you're going to do the round over. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our acrylic that we cut earlier. Now keep in mind it should be perfectly lined up with the front baffle and we're going to take some two part epoxy and we're going to glue, put glue down on the uh, back of the front baffle and then we're going to clamp that acrylic piece to it. Now make sure when you clamp this down two things. Make sure that you line it up properly that there's no gaps in there and make sure that you clamp it very tight and that's so that the glue can squish down. If you don't squish the glue down enough you'll see bubbles in there and that will take away from the light effect that you're going to do later. Alright now the next part is something that you really need to do and take some of the practice pieces. What I did is I when I cut out those circles I practiced on the circle pieces of plexiglass that I cut out. I went ahead and glued a piece onto the scrap MDF and I cut different size holes for the screws that I needed uh, and then once you figure out go ahead and drill some holes on the back to figure out what size hole you need in order for your screw to go in correctly if you cut if you drill too small of a hole you'll actually crack the plexiglass and you don't want that you want your speaker to look beautiful at the end and make it look really cool so make sure that you, you practice first before you actually go on to this step. Now just screw on the driver. You can either use a drill, just don't over screw, or just use a screwdriver at this point in time. Now congratulations, you actually have the front of the speaker absolutely finished. You do not need to do anything else for the front right now. And so go ahead and give yourself a, a pat on the back because you have completed at least the front of it. We are not finished yet. We need to take those four sides and now glue them together. Now we should have 
uh, two sides and a top and a bottom piece and we're going to need to line those up and make sure they're nice and square and glue those together. I usually use a brad nailer to nail them in place to make sure that they stay together. Of course you could just clamp it at this time if you want to. Once you glue the sides together and you let them sit for a while, it is time to move on to soldering the LEDs. Now you're going to need a little bit of speaker wire. The size of the speaker wire really doesn't need to be much and that's because there's not going to be very much amperage running through these. And you're going to start gluing the LEDs together. Now there is an important step in here. You do need to check to see what size resistors you need based off of the size uh, power supply that you're going to use. Now the size power supply I'm going to use is a 19 volt power supply. So now that I know it's a 19 volt power supply, I can watch my earlier video which shows you how to uh, factor in what's, what type of LED uh, resistor you need. And mine came out to be a 50 ohm resistor. So I took three, 50, three 150 ohm resistors and put them, soldered them in parallel to come up with exactly 50 ohms. If you don't have 350 ohms, you can buy a 56 ohm fairly easily and that's not gonna affect the brightness too much. Now, if you decide to do something other than a 19 volt to power, you're gonna need to follow my link. I will link it in both the description and I will link it at the end of the video. Just watch that video and it'll show you how to figure out what size resistor you need. Now, before we move on, we're going to go ahead and mark one inch all the way around to keep the LEDs at the same height. This is where we're actually going to glue the LEDs onto. And so we're going to go ahead and start gluing those on. Now we're going to have two actual rows of six LEDs. And each one of those six LEDs is going to have that 50 ohm resistor that I talked about earlier. And we're just going to glue them up and we're going to take the we're going to run these in series, and so the positives and negatives are going to continue to alternate together. If you don't know how to hook up in series, once again, watch that video. It'll teach you how to do that. And we will have two of those. So the two negatives will go to the negative power on the back of the speaker, and the two positives will go to the positive on the back of the speaker, which in this case isn't connected yet, and it's just going to be a 2.5 by 5.5 DC power jack. You can get those about anywhere. Radio Shack, Amazon, wherever you want. Now once you have the power soldered to it, you need to test the LED strip. Honestly, it's best to test each LED strip separately, but you'll notice because one of them, if only one of them turns on, then you know you have a problem with the other LED strip. Always test all throughout the project test. You do not want to get these all the way together and be very excited to fire them up only to find out that your LEDs or your speaker is not hooked up properly. Because once this thing is hooked up, it is hooked up. You are not going to get back into this box. Now that we have all the LEDs glued together, we're going to go ahead and start working on the rear of the speaker. Drill the holes for the rear of the speaker. We're going to go ahead and measure and draw a horizontal line on where we want those. This is really an individual preference. There is no specific spot you need them. Now I'm going to go ahead and use a couple of these speaker terminals and I'm already going to use that DC power jack that we went ahead and used. So we're going to need to draw drill holes for each one of these in the rear of the speaker. Now after we've drilled those, we're also going to want to take a port. Now I made a port and I showed you in an earlier video on how to make these. It's a one and a half inch by seven inch port. And there's a half inch, of course, for the material of the MDF, so it will be a total length of seven and a half inches. I'm going to take this port and we're going to spray paint it black on the inside. You can see I did it right here. And that really makes it look much better. You don't really want white going out and it's hard to find black PVC. Of course, if you can find it, go ahead and go and buy it. Now, after we paint that port black, we're just going to go ahead and glue it in place. Now, I use the tape measure here in order to keep it at the right height and keep it in place, but you can use whatever you want in order to keep it there. But make sure that it has a really nice seal on there because if there isn't a good seal, you're not going to get the sound that you wanted from this. Now we're going to just vinyl wrap the rear. Just do exactly what you did earlier and vinyl wrap it. And once you get this completely done, just drill those holes back out again. And I always drill them from the top down. You 
do not want to drill from the bottom up. If you do, you could actually tear your vinyl and uh, it will show on that back side and you don't want that. So now we're going to go ahead and install and solder the terminals. So those speaker terminals I told you about earlier that I'm going to use, I'm going to solder both the positive and negative cables to that. And we're going to go ahead and use a little bit of hot glue. Now I'm using just a really cheap uh, hot glue gun that I got my wife for crafts. Uh, I would recommend a better one if you can, but really you don't need a lot of great tools. If you want to use something other than hot glue, that's perfectly fine as well. Now we're going to glue and clamp these, I'm sorry, glue these together. And when we get near the top, we're going to cut the positive wire, which is the red one, and we are going to add our baffle step corrector. Now this is a 0.90 mH inductor and a 20 ohm resistor. And that's going to go ahead and give us a little bit of a crossover for our speaker in order to really get the highs and the lows to sound good together. And we're going to solder another piece of wire onto that in order to get the best sound. Make sure you glue this into place on somewhere because you don't want that rattling in the speaker. Alright guys, well now that we have the baffle step corrector installed, all we have to do is glue and clamp the rear onto the sides. So we will glue that together and this, for all of these things that we're gluing the MDF on, remember you're just going to be using wood glue here. You don't need to be using the two part epoxy, just wood glue. Alright, and now that that is finished, we just need to vinyl wrap the sides. Now go ahead and make the vinyl wrap longer than the sides and just go ahead and pull that until you get a very nice look and continue to work that around all four sides and trim that up with a knife. Now everything should be looking pretty much complete. I should state that if you wanted to while vinyl wrapping the sides if you want to make it look real nice you're going to need to of course fill in the sides with something like a wood filler or some people use Bondo. Otherwise you might see it on the actual speaker once you finish vinyl wrapping it. Now test it. Test the LEDs again and test the speakers. If you do not have a way to solder the speakers on, uh, I don't like to have a lot of length, use some alligator clips to test that. But make sure both the LEDs work and the speaker works because this is the last step. And once you glue this together, there's no turning back. So, if everything works out correctly, go ahead and solder the speakers on, add some two-part epoxy all across the uh, MDF on the front, and clamp it together. And that is it. Guys, you are finished. Once that that seals give it about an you know, I give it a good I give it the whole night in order to really make sure that clamps well. And then enjoy your speakers guys. It is that simple. How easy is that? Now enjoy it. Make your friends jealous by having the coolest speakers in town. If you have any questions, any thoughts about this, let me know. I will have a video coming up soon that will uh, show you with it actually testing it out. I, I'll be playing it on some video games. Uh, maybe I'll even have some friends over to be able to test it and tell me what they think about the, the sound and we'll play some, some songs on it. Let me know what you want to hear on it, if you want to hear any particular um, games or whatnot. If I have them all, I'll do that. Now always guys, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up subscribe uh, follow me on Twitter if you want if you have a Twitter account and as always take care Counting double digit thousand. <laughs>